I'm Staff Sergeant E.L. Craig. NATO says it is steadily degrading Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi's ability to command and direct his forces. In a NATO briefing, Brigadier General Mark Van Um said in the past 10 days, his forces have destroyed more than 40 tanks and several armored personnel carriers belonging to forces loyal to Gaddafi. Since the beginning of the operation, NATO and its partners have flown more than 2,800 sorties, including almost 1,200 strike missions. The Army may already have the equipment needed to protect soldiers from brain injuries. A new study found giving a soldier a helmet one size bigger with just a bit more padding can cut the force of an impact by nearly a quarter. Researchers found the helmet padding performs as well as the padding in sports helmets. There just needs to be a little bit more of it. The study was conducted by Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. Over to Fort Bragg, where North Carolina, where operations remain fluid after severe weather rocked the region. Sunday, a tornado touched down in Fayetteville, tearing through several neighborhoods and roads near Fort Bragg. There were no deaths or significant injuries, but officials say the base lost power for about 24 hours and several buildings, including maintenance facilities and airfields, were damaged. That's your news update. For more military news, head online to pentagonchannel.mil. Aircraft maintenance is critical to any flight mission, and it is a job that requires constant upkeep. Airman First Class Sarah Bryce shows us what happens when an F-16 developed major wing woes. One of Osan's main fighting forces is down for repairs. This F-16 has a wing that needs replacement. There's a, a faulty wing pump and we can't change it here at home station, so we just replace the whole wing and then it'll get fixed at another company. Replacing the wing involves a thorough cleaning of the bolt holes and the 16 bolts that attach the wing to the body. To get the F-16 back up in the air as soon as possible, fuel systems personnel work day and night to change the wing. What we have is about three people on each 12-hour shift and it's just consecutive till it's done. The, the, the night shift guys, they were already working their 12 hours and, and they were in here jobbing out. And we come walking in and, and seeing how much that, that they had got done and that just energized us to come in and, uh, and, and step it up just a little. A 24 seven, 12 hour rotating shift like this usually takes three days to fully complete the switch out. Today, there are more than the regular three members working on shift. The younger crew members are here for experience training. Trying to get those guys involved a little bit, get them some experience, because this is the only, this is the only way they're going to get experience is to come out here and, and, and do it. Opportunities like these are rare for aircraft fuel systems personnel. A repair like this only happens about once a year. Despite the 12-hour shifts, the team worked hard and maintained a positive attitude. Fuel shop's awesome. and. Uh... We, uh, we work really hard, and uh, we don't complain about it. Airman First Class Sarah Bryce, Osan Air Base, South Korea. The fuel shop successfully replaced the wing within three days of starting the task. Coming up ahead on Around the Services, a seven-year-old signs up for service. But first, big boom, we head downrange with members of Explosive Ordnance Disposal to see how they handle a normal day in the office.